I don't know what's happening. Because I had over four hours of footage. Cowboy vibe. Who are you? <laughs> because I've been slacking. My social battery knows no limits. Let's start. Let's Welcome to a new vlog. <laughs> uh, happy Monday. I didn't vlog at all really yesterday because I was still recouping from the party um, from last vlog. But today is our friend Brian's birthday and he's turning 23. And so we're going, are we going to a bar? Where are we going? I think it's a bar. It's called, what is it? The Down Under. It sounds like a bar, like a dive bar or something. But apparently they're having a painting night, so I don't know if that means they're having like an art exhibit or like a... It'd be really fun if it was like a drink and do a Bob Ross painting. <laughs> I have no idea what it means, but I'm excited to find out. We're going somewhere with Brian for his birthday. I don't know what's happening. Happy birthday, loser! Thank you. <laughs> so what exactly are we doing today, Brian? What's with the special place that we're going to? What's the down under? I have no idea. My friend just told me about it. Okay. I'm glad you know just about as much about this place as we do. So what's this painting night that they're supposed to be having? Um, I believe it's like wine and painting. Wine? Or cocktails and painting. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so you get a drink and you paint. And you try to paint. Do they have Bob Ross playing? I hope so. They better. I want to paint some Bob Ross. How old are you? 45? 46. <laughs> um, I'm 23. Yep, um, old, yeah. same thing. <laughs> Anything above 21's old. Yeah, I feel old, I feel ancient. Happy Wednesday. I've been spending a lot of time working on last week's vlog because I had over four hours of footage. The vlog is just so really long and I've been working on it for a while but I still have a lot more to go. So I've just been spending a lot of time editing lately. <laughs> it should be up by the time you're seeing this so make sure you go check it out. Um, it would mean the world to me because I put so much work into it already and I know I have so much more work to that will go into it. But I wanted to give you guys a quick update on what I've been reading. So I finished Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. I liked it. It's not my favorite Christina Lauren book. It kind of took a while to grow on me because I wasn't a huge fan of the like cowboy vibe that it had. But after a while I got used to it and I kind of felt more into the romance and I one thing I really liked about it for most of the book they were on this like treasure hunt of this supposed legend that there's this treasure and her dad knew about and so they think that they have like a map to it so they're trying to find it and um, I don't know I think treasure hunts are fun but like I remember I was reading it and then something wild happened and it just was like out of the blue and not what I expected from an adult romance because I expected it to be like fluffy <laughs> but there was something that was like whoa this is like intense it kind of just like happened out of nowhere and I was like whoa and then like it kind of held that tensity for a while and then like it like tensity came back at points um so I really liked that like it was um an interesting like addition to what I thought was going to be a fluffy romance but overall enjoyed it it was okay I started reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry which is her newest book that um just came out recently I'm not super far into it but it follows a literary agent and I love that aspect because that's exactly like what I want to do so I really love that um, the main character's literary agent. I'm like, give me the details about what it's like, you know? She met this guy at the beginning, and honestly, like, the introduction of him, I don't know why, but he was this, like, really stuck-up 
publishing guy she was like had a meeting with and I don't know why but I imagined him as like an older guy like an old man <laughs> and um, I'm realizing now that I'm a little bit further into it that I think he's the gonna be the romance like the love interest and I was like oh I don't know why I assumed it was an older guy when we first met him. So I was just a little thrown off at first when I realized that this was the love interest. Yeah, definitely I think an enemies to lovers vibe because they did not hit it off in that first meeting. So if this is the ro if this guy is the romance romantic interest, then yeah, definitely an enemies to lovers. I'm gonna go to bed for tonight, but um, I think tomorrow is Thursday, so tomorrow I need to continue editing last week's vlog and hopefully get it up tomorrow. Um, and then I have D&D. &D. Busy day. I did, and the camera saw it too. So a bit of context for the last couple of clips that you just saw because I've been slacking in the talking part of this vlogging. I've mostly been like, oh, I'm doing something cool, I should vlog it um, without like giving any context. So first you saw Will and I put together this little wall from my party. We used each like a small portion of each set of streamer that I got for all the eras and then of course I hung all of the posters that we made. I had to trim some of them down because there wasn't enough vertical wall space for all nine posters to have the total 14 inches that they like started out as. So we cut down the ones um, that were able to like trim some off the top and the bottom. Um, I think it looks pretty good. It kind of bothers me that red is just so much bigger than all the rest of them, but that's okay because red's my favorite album, my favorite era, so it kind of works out. I couldn't bring myself 
to throw the streamers away because they were well, one so difficult to find and to get but also they're very expensive like the ones from party city were like nine dollars and the ones from target were like six so like and i bought nine total so like that was a lot <laughs> so yeah i liked this idea of like reusing them in a way i also cut off little strips like tinier strips like this size and i'll probably have to cut it down just a, a bit more but i'm gonna do this cool thing that i saw on tiktok if i can find the tiktok i'll like put it i'll insert the tiktok here so that you guys can see like the original inspiration for it i've been creative journaling for over four years now and one of my absolute favorite things to do is gather pieces of what i come across throughout the week whether it be items that I picked up from stores, receipts from my giant library hall, items from different events that I go to, just anything and everything that I think to grab. Then each Sunday night, I collage the items in my journal. Along with the little spread that I put together, I make my to-do list for the week. To be honest, it's just a really fun way to stay on top of what I want to get done. And it's been really amazing to look back on every year. And it just so happens that I just got two new notebooks for my birthday from my friend Faith L. Um, I have two friends named Faith. <laughs> but she got me two different notebooks and they're both about this size. The other one's just a bit smaller so I chose this one. And I think this would be really cute to like make little spreads out of as like a mini scrapbook kind of thing. I think I'm gonna do one spread for like just party stuff because I have a lot of stuff from the party that I want to put in there. To, as like a keepsake but um and then i'll do starting this week like i have some stuff from this week already that i have decided to put in there so like starting with this week i'm gonna try to remember to do this um i haven't been the greatest about bowl journaling lately because like i still haven't even made my may spreads and it's may 28th so i'm still gonna make them and then i will retroactively fill them out based on what i remember from the month it's really helpful to me because this has happened before where I just don't have time or I fall into like a rut with bullet journaling where I scroll through like my text messages between my friends and like my pictures and my like Instagram posts and my snapchat memories and like all of those things to like jog my memory of what I did every day and um, do my best to write them down because like the biggest reason that I like bullet journaling it's not so much for the like planning aspect of it because I don't actually use my bullet journal to plan a super whole lot. I kind of use my marker board more because it's more visual for me. But I like using my bullet journal as like a keepsake and a memento of things that I have done throughout the year. Which is why I do the memory pages. Which is why I do the highlight of my day pages. Because it's so easy to forget the little things that you do day to day. So then I can go back and look at my highlight pages and be like, oh my gosh, that's when I went to this place with this person and whatever. And I really like looking back on that. The habit tracker page and like the mood tracker page are f like good to do and I like doing them as well. But um, it's not super important to me that they're like 100% accurate. I'd prefer to have those like memory pages. Um filled out essentially all that to say is if you see a may bullet journaling video at the end of may mind your business <laughs> that was a tangent but the next clip that you or clips i should say that you saw were of me and will and my friend brian and my friend connor um there was like they were shooting off like hot air balloons like launching hot air balloons in it's at baxter arena which is kind of near campus um i think it's like a memorial day celebration i'm not 100 percent sure what it was for but brian brian told us about it and he was like we should go and we're like heck yeah let's do it so we all went there to see them like launch these hot air balloons and we were there for like 30 minutes to an hour i don't know exactly how long we were there but then they finally started to launch the hot air balloon i think i i think i got this on film so you might have already seen this clip but it like fell over and like people were screaming and like freaking out and so they ended up not launching any of them because it like right when they went to do it it got like just windy enough that they're like it's not safe to launch these so then they didn't unfortunately launch them so we like didn't get to see any hot air balloons go up but then we were right next to Xarban village which is this like really good area where there's like lots of um restaurants and a movie theater and businesses like it's a good like place that you can like walk around to different places which is right near um scott campus and so we were like well we're close enough we could just walk to like a restaurant and like get drinks and eat something since we didn't get to do hot air balloons but we could still do something fun 
So we went to the Inner Rail, which is kind of like a food court-y situation where it's like a big building and there's like a bunch of different like tiny versions of restaurants in there. I don't know if, I'm not sure if there are restaurants that have other locations or maybe they're just restaurants that just exist in the Inner Rail. But we got food and drinks. I got um, like street tacos. I really wanted to get queso, but unfortunately they were out of queso, but it was very busy. So like, I totally understand. Um, and then we got, I got a drink. I think it was called a Huckleberry Mule or something like that. And we got crepes from the crepe guy because I always hear good things about this crepe guy. I don't think he's an actual guy. I think it's just what people call the restaurant that makes the crepes. I actually don't know. I didn't order them, but they were so good. Oh my gosh. I got like a peanut butter and chocolate one. It was so good. And then after that, we went to Will's dorm and we watched some American Horror Stories, the anthology, because I've been introducing Connor to that because um, he likes anthologies. I'm like, you would really like this. And he likes American Horror Story. So I was like, we should watch this. So we watched an episode of that. It was a very good time. And now for a reading update. So yet yeah, last night and today I continued reading Carrie Soto's back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I am on page 75. So I, I am getting there. It's just being, I'm being slower than I would like to be because I'm just so busy. Cause every time I have free time, I'm like, I need to edit videos. I need to film videos. I need to bullet journal. I really need a bullet journal. I'm so behind on that. I need to read, I need to do all these other things. And then I, of course I have work and then I have friends and I love people time. I love hanging out with people. I thrive best in like my small friend groups. Like I love, I'm very social and my social battery knows no limits. And so like whenever people text me, I'm like, hey, you wanna hang out? I'm like, yes. Like you don't have to ask me. I'm always wanna hang out. But unfortunately, like because of that, I'm less productive because I am spending lots of time with friends, which is not a bad thing. I'm very glad that I have friends to hang out with. It's amazing. But it just I just don't get as much done on like the days when I do have time. There's just so much going on that I sometimes reading falls to the backside. At least physical reading. I'm usually pretty good about audiobooks and also I'm still kind of coming out of a slump I think I'm mostly out of it at this point hopefully this year will go like last year did where I didn't read much in May but then I read 21 books in June so like hopefully and my the goal is for June is to catch up on my Goodreads challenge because last I checked I was like 14 books behind which is terrible so I want to catch up on that and like kick it into gear a little bit because I can't get too behind I am still reading this working on reading more of it. I, I am so freaking excited about it. So I need, I just need to like, sometimes I just need to like mentally be like, you need to sit down and pick up your book because given the chance I will scroll on TikTok, which is very bad. And I've set like timers on my phone to like not scroll on TikTok, but I, I do it anyway. It's terrible. Really liking Carrie Soto is back. They actually, I just read on my lunch break today at work, they mentioned one of the Riva kids and their dad from Malibu Rising. And so like this book is calling back to Malibu Rising. And I have heard that Malibu Rising called back to like Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones, but it had been so long since I'd read those two books when I read Malibu Rising that I didn't recognize the name because the name wasn't Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones. Like if it had been those names, I would have noticed it. But like it was a name of somebody like a side character and I didn't, it didn't process because it's been so long since I've read those. Also, side tangent, I'm just going on and on in this clip. I was at work today and well, two things happened at work. One, I was like shelving and like organizing my section and I heard a customer be like, Malibu Rising. And I like looked over and I was like, yes. I was like, I almost said, I'll talk to you about Malibu Rising. Like I love talking about Malibu Rising. But right before I said that, the customer goes, I hated that book. And I went, oh no. And so like, I'm glad I didn't say anything because it would have been awkward. But I was like, inside I was like dying. I was just like pretending to just keep organizing. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> it hurt me so bad. <laughs> it's fine. People can have their opinions, but I, it hurt my heart. <laughs> Second thing that happened at work, which isn't related to Malibu Rising or anything, but I was on the ladder. We have like a ladder that like rolls across the floor to any of the shelves to get to like the overstock sections and I was on the ladder to get more Rainbow Rowell books down and I 
was like climbing down and my foot missed the second from the bottom rung and I kind of like slid down the ladder the rest of the way. I landed on my feet and I didn't get hurt so it was fine. Like I'm okay. But it really scared me and I was kind of like shook for basically my entire rest of my shift. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like I just, that adrenaline and then like, you know, after the adrenaline wears off, you get tired. So I was like, just off my game for a bit and then I just got tired and yeah, it's kind of threw my day off. Like not, it isn't terrible, like I survived. It's fine. It just was unfortunate because I was in such a good mood before that and then it kind of freaked me out. I finished reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry and I really liked it. I think I liked it better than Beach Read, to be honest. Um, the main character in that is a literary agent, so that's like right up my alley. That's like kind of the stuff that I want to do. So I was like just eating it up. I was like, oh yes, give me all the literary information. The whole plot of it is like her sister Libby talks her into like vacationing to this like small town and it's like it's really the book is really centered on like their sisterly connection which I really liked because like it is a romance but it's also like a really heavily centered around her relationship with her sister. I finished that one yesterday and then I believe this morning I started reading Chef's Kiss by TJ Alexander. I have an ALC of this so I am listening to the audiobook but I also have a damaged copy so um, I do enjoy the fact that even though I am reading on an audio, I'm still knocking off something off my physical TBR because my physical TBR gets so crazy so fast. It's okay. I'm not like super invested in it. The main character works as a chef um, at this like test kitchen thing. So she like tests out recipes and decides what they need to be better or whatever. One day when she goes into work, her boss is like, we're losing money, we need to figure out something to make more money for this company, so we're hire we're adding you to our social media marketing team to get our name out there more so that they can, you know, stay afloat. And the main character does not like this. She doesn't know anything about social media, she's like, this is not my cup of tea, there's this new guy that they hired that um, is like heading the social media squad group of people and he's so annoying and I hate him. She's just like all around not having a good time and on top of that her manager um, just retired kind of out of the blue because she got injured and she was like well I might as well retire because she was like in that she was gonna retire anyway so since she got injured she just retires. So she gets a new manager on the same day and the new man she doesn't like the new manager and she's being so mean to the new manager and I know that the new manager is who's on the cover, so it's like, I think it might be, I don't, they're not like quite enemies, but she just doesn't like her. Might be enemies to lovers, kind of, workplace romance. I'm waiting for the romance to kick in, it hasn't quite happened quite yet, but we'll see. I mean, I'm not like disliking it, I'm kind of just annoyed by the main character and how mean she's being to the new manager. And honestly, like, she's been complaining so much about the social media position that she has to fill. And maybe it's just because I do social media and like, I understand it but I'm like it's not that big of a deal that is my update and I think Will is on his way over and I'm probably gonna work on my bullet journal pages hopefully is my plan and we'll probably watch Supernatural and we'll go to bed and that's it um so I'm gonna close out the vlog here thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in next week's vlog bye <laughs>